We're talking about giant molecules today, also called polymers. Poly means many. And so another word that has many in it, that has poly in it, is polygamy. Um, a polygamist is someone who has many wives. Um, monogamy is when you have just one husband or wife. Polytheist is when you believe in many gods, like um, the Romans did, for example, and a monotheist believes in one god. So poly means many, and mono means just one. So a polymer is a bunch of, or many, little molecules put together. A monomer is one building block, one small molecule. You put a bunch of them together and you make a polymer. Large molecules are called polymers, poly for many. So here's a polymer. If you look at this polymer right here, it looks like a whole bunch of beads strung together. So you have one, two, three, four, five. You have a bunch of these little units. And this unit right here looks just like this unit. And so this thing is a polymer made up of all these monomers. Here's one, two, three, four monomers, and so on. You could count them all up. Those would be all the monomers. So this one little unit is called a monomer. And the whole thing all together is a polymer. If you zoom in right on this stuff, this is what it really looks like. So each of these bends, most of them are carbon atoms. So carbon to carbon to carbon to carbon. You can see again that carbon has four bonds. This carbon has one, two, three, four. So these are carbon rings with an oxygen stuck here. This is a molecule of glucose. So this thing is the monomer. So in this case, the monomer, mono meaning one, the monomer is glucose. So here's the thing not to get confused with. This monomer doesn't mean that it's one atom. It means that it's one small molecule. So the small molecule is glucose, C6H12O6. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six carbons, etc. Here's one monomer. Here's another monomer of glucose. Here's another monomer of glucose. Here's another monomer oops, of glucose. Here's another monomer of glucose. Here's another monomer of glucose. You put them all together, you get a polymer, many molecules of glucose. Polymers are also called macromolecules, macro meaning big. Since these have carbon in them, we'll also call them large organic molecules. So you need to know that organic means that, a mo that it's a molecule with at least two carbons. And you can see this molecule has way more than two carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six times every single one, two, three, four, five. There's another one over here, so six times six already. So remember, organic is when you have at least a couple of carbons. Um, and they're also called macromolecules or polymers. So these words all mean the same thing for our purposes. Polymers are built from smaller molecules called, and this is, this is the small thing, one would be mono, so monomers. So here's that monomer. These are polymers. Again, if you zoom in on this little thing, you'll get one of these. So each bend here is a carbon, except for that one that's an oxygen. And then there's OHs and some carbon sticking off all of these. So that whole thing... Um, all of this is a polymer, or zoomed in closely, that's a polymer. And the monomers are each of these little things. So that's your monomer, or this is your monomer. Again, mono for one, poly for many. Polytheist, monotheist. Polymer, monomer. Okay, quiz break. How many monomers do you see here? So you can count them up. I'm going to tell you one, two, three, four, five, six. How many polymers are made? How, how are polymers made? And the way that you make them is by str stringing together many monomers. So glucose plus another glucose plus another glucose. These are all monomers. You put them together and, well, I didn't put enough here, did I? That was a little lazy. Anyway, you put them together plus a whole bunch of other ones and you get your polymer. There's a special reaction that's used where there's an OH on this one and an H on this one, and you take the H off and you take the OH off, so you're taking out water. 
it's called a dehydration synthesis. Um, it's a little bit more detail than we need to know, but there is a special reaction that occurs when you put these together and you make these big things. What you need to know, though, is just little things, monomers, go together to make polymers. And there's a chemical reaction that takes place, and you use something called an enzyme to do it, and we'll talk about those later. How are polymers broken down? By breaking off the monomers. And so there's your polymer, and you use an enzyme, which is something we'll show you later, and you break the bond. And so you break them into individual glucose molecules. When you do that, you're adding water into it. It's called a hydrolysis reaction. And again, that's a little bit more than you need to know, but you can certainly ask me in class, and I'll be happy to show you that. <coughs> so yeah, at this point, usually the kids cry, and they say, hey, I really can't do that. That's too scary. So I'm going to give you um, some something to work on. If we were in class, I would have you work together on this. Instead, I'm going to talk you through it um, to show you what I really want you to get out of all this. So, ooh, this is a little scary looking. This molecule is a more complex polymer. The last one that we looked at wasn't so hard. Let's go backwards a little bit. Okay, this to this to this, gee, they all look the same. So that one is a little bit easier to do. This next one is harder. Let's skip the crying baby. Okay. Whoops. No, I don't need that either. <laughs> I want to go backwards. It's glitching me out. Okay, so this molecule is a more complex polymer made of more complex monomers. So this is a little bit harder than what you've seen before. Using a pencil, try to figure out what the monomers look like and circle them. So if you're working at home on this, it's because you missed class. And what I want you to do is pause this right now and see if you can figure it out. Just spend a few minutes looking at this. See if you can see any pattern. If you find a pattern, that's your monomer. So go ahead and pause, and I'm just going to keep on talking and do it. Okay, so here I have nitrogen, and this bend is a carbon, and this bend is a carbon. So all the bends, organic, molecule, organic chemists get a little bit lazy, and they're like, you know what, there's so many carbons, I'm not going to write a carbon every time we have a carbon, because this thing is made out of carbons. They, all the organic chemists know that. So every time you have a bend here, the organic chemists, it's shorthand, the organic chemists just know, hey, that must be a carbon, because nobody's writing it in, so it's got to be a carbon. So we've got nitrogen, carbon, carbon. Nitrogen, carbon, carbon. Nitrogen, carbon, carbon. Nitrogen, carbon, carbon. In fact, you can even look at it this way. Nitrogen, carbon, carbon with an O. 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 So you see the pattern so far? So here is a monomer, Oops. and here's another monomer. Now here's the confusing part. This is what students have a hard time seeing. This, let's switch colors here. This thing doesn't look the same as this thing, but the other stuff is the same. So this stuff, nitrogen, carbon, carbon with an O, Nitrogen, carbon, carbon with an O. That stuff is the same. Here's another one. Nitrogen, carbon, carbon with an O. So here's my next monomer. Nitrogen, carbon, carbon with an O. Here's my next monomer. Nitrogen, carbon, carbon with an O. There's my next monomer. So I'll show you the stuff that's different in each one. Let's see. This thing is different. This carbon has this thingy on it. That's different. This one has this thingy sticking off of it. That's different. But let's look at what's the same. Nitrogen, carbon, carbon with an O. Nitrogen, carbon, carbon with an O. Nitrogen, carbon, carbon with an O. So if you didn't see that right away when you were working on this, really no big deal. I want you to be able to see it now. You've got a pattern of repeating units. So here's a monomer, here's a monomer, here's a monomer, here's a monomer. The monomers are a lot more complex. They're putting together a molecule that's actually a lot more complex. This is a protein, and um, proteins are really complex, and it's good that they are because they make you, and you're pretty complex. Here's Usually those don't come through, but that was annoying orange screaming for all my kids. 
Okay. This is just a picture of the monomer. So here's your nitrogen, carbon, carbon with an O that we've been talking about. And this thing is called an R group. This means the variant, that means it changes. So that's the part that I circled in black a couple slides back that showed, hey, this is the part that's different. This is the part that I colored in yellow. So I'll do that again for you. Nitrogen, carbon, carbon with an O. That part was the same in each of them. And this part, the R group, was the part that's different. There's no element that's R. This means it might be an S sticking off, or it might be some big um, carbon skeleton or whatever. So this is what I already showed you on the other on the other slide. OK, I'm having so much fun with polymers that I just can't stop. See if you can figure out what the monomer is in this complex polymer. So pause and take a look at this and see if you can figure out what the repeating units are. And I'm going to go ahead and show you right now. So pause and then um, come back on and I'll show you. OK, so here's what you want to look at. You've got this um, pentagon, I guess it's called, and then another one, five. Um, five bumps, one, two, three, four, five, and then another one here, and another one here. And this is kind of crazy. If you have these notes that you downloaded from It's Learning, turn your page upside down, and you'll see that this is the same thing running backwards. So it's this upside down pentagon. You've got your O's on the bottom instead of your O's on the top, but this is really the same thing as that. And then check this out. This thing is of some circles of carbon with nitrogens. And so is that, and so is that, and so is that. And if you turn it upside down, that's what you've got here. Here's a double ring, and here's a single ring, but nevertheless, you've still got these circles with nitrogens in them. So you've also got these P's. So I'm going to draw it like this. Here's the monomer. Here's another. Here's another. Here's another. And then if you can turn your page upside down, you can do that this way. Here's one monomer, and here's another, and another, and another. This is actually what DNA looks like. Each of these little things is called a monomer. And for DNA, the monomer is called a nucleotide. And all of them together make up a polymer, so the whole entire thing you would call a polymer, and the polymer is a nucleic acid, or DNA. And so we'll look at that in um, a couple more video units. Here's Knowing Orange screaming, because it is kind of intimidating. Okay, that's it for right now.